The other question is, um, in the past, do you know of any incidents where people, there's, they've shot on residential property, whether they've <clears throat> brought in, because I don't know the high-tech stuff on the lights and the different megas and all this stuff, where something like this has happened, where the police or the fire have been called, where there's been safety issues on private property? I do, yes, we, we do get calls occasionally on stuff like that. And is the fire chief getting up ready to say something? Yeah, uh, just <clears throat> either one of you gentlemen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> are we talking a lot of calls, a couple things? What? I, uh, yes, uh, you know, the, the, the home, their, their, uh, their electrical is either a 15 or 20 amp circuit. And so we've seen it where they'll plug into it and it snaps the breakers. So what they will do on occasion is they will take jumper cables and they will go outside and they will jump above the meter because it's direct power to power their equipment. And it's a safety violation. But if we're not there to check that to make sure that they're not using you know, proper electrical cords, um, proper GFIs, um, there's an electrical hazard. Plus, a lot of times they're filming in their garage. And we all know what we have in our garage. We have flammable liquids, we have paints, we have solvents, we have compressed uh, flammable <clears throat> gases. And we need to take a look at that. We're really there for public safety. We want to support what they're doing, but our job is public safety. And we really, in essence, are their conscience of the industry to make sure that, number one, the property is going to remain intact, not catch fire because of the electrical draw and the overloads, as well as the area that they're using has proper access and egress, because usually a garage has the garage door that's closed, and it has a very narrow door. And usually there's a lot of storage around those doors. So in the event that there's a, a hazard or emergency or a flash fire, um, they won't be able to get out of that structure that's in there. And we just want the opportunity to go ahead to pre-scout that, to take a look at that, to make sure that it's fine, that it's safe for everybody that's working in that environment. Okay, well, that definitely had some uh, answers a few of my questions. Thank you. Councilmember Gordon. Um, yeah, a couple of things. First of all, I have the highest regard for the concerns and professionalism of our fire chief, police chief, police staff, everyone concerned with safety. I think we're all concerned with safety. But I think there, we're mixing a few things up here. Just as an example, the concept of handheld camera. Sometimes people have hats with cameras. They do in construction. They can't have their hands. That doesn't change as far as I'm concerned a safety issue. It's just that it's being used on the head to view things. There are doctors that work with lights where their hands are free. It might be a shoulder-mounted camera. It might not be necessarily. I saw a, fil uh, a letter come in today with a body-mounted camera, so hands could be free to operate equipment. Um, I think that, again, there's another angle of this, and that's the um, commercial angle. I, I Just right off the top, I think this permitting thing is just way over the top. It is just way too overreaching. I don't know if it's compared to other cities or not. I think that it's a valid point that Burbank should really come up with something that's solid and meaningful and common sense. Some questions. Public property. Maybe you've clarified I misunderstood this tonight. People want to film a wedding. The film, I'm, let's say, is going to be for their own use, but they're going to hire a videographer to do it, and it's going to be at the local park. Do they need a film permit? If, if it's a handheld camera, no, they wouldn't need a permit as long as they're not excluding okay. um, use of the public uh, proper or, or the public property. Then no, they wouldn't. And if there were some high school students or a nonprofit stu uh, group or a college student who was making a whole movie, they would be, they would need a permit to be exempted from fees. Is that it? That's correct. Okay. Um, it seems to me that if somebody wanted to have a home occupation, for example, and I read that was the reference earlier I made about the uh, uh, land use element. The person is a professional. Person knows how to operate the equipment. Person knows how to set up lights. Person has an insurance policy, and I'm assuming their homeowner's insurance would cover that. I'm not, I haven't seen anyone with jumper cables. <laughs> That'd be pretty dangerous, I think, for the individual, but um, I'm not saying it didn't happen. I, I don't think the average Joe is going to go, maybe it'll happen, 
I've seen qualified electricians, by the way, get barely burned on panels. So it can happen to anybody. So uh, I, I think that on this particular situation where I'm leaning is, there should be, in terms of the small time use on private property uh, that's not impinging on public property, not causing any threat to safety. I'll give an example. Someone wants three people to shoot a film at their house or in their backyard, for example. Okay, if they're going to park their cars in the street, if they're going to have a van, if they're going to have a catering truck, sure, get a permit. But if they're just going to pull into the person's driveway or walk there, I'm sorry. And if it's for personal use, I don't see in this permit process if, if an individual wanted to take their camera and film their baby but wanted to set up some lights, they wouldn't be restricted and wouldn't need a permit. It's the same safety issue in terms of light, if they want a lot of light up there. I think anyone can burn their house down with a little creativity. In fact, I had a house fire myself. It wasn't my fault, but it happens. So um, I, I really think, plus on the economic issue, <coughs> as I mentioned earlier, and I've heard from a number of people in the entertainment industry, people are being laid off. And also, in the Screen Actors Guild, I understand only about 10%, I've been told, are full-time employed. So these people do secondary jobs. They might be videographer, <coughs> videographers. They might be other photographers. That's it. I think, and I feel the pain of uh, Council Member Ramos, I think it's kind of absurd in the interest of sharing public information that there would be no problem for the PIO to come in and film uh, a council member or city function in a event office and a professional person could come in or even a semi-professional person come in and take a picture. I, I don't see why someone would have a problem and maybe I'm misunderstanding the ordinance as it's been proposed. but. Um, it seems to me, uh, whether it's a council person or another government official, uh, and again, the member of the press, I understand, could come in without a permit and do the exact same type of filming <coughs> without a permit in the council member's office or other city office. So I'm having a hard time understanding this. I absolutely understand for studios doing a big production, no problem. I think that's where the emphasis should be. As far as the small time operation, I don't know why it should be limited to handheld cameras. As long as it's not interfering with the use of public property or in, in causing any threat to uh, safety at a park, for example, someone wants to film their kid's baseball game, I don't know. Maybe I'm going down the wrong street. But these are where my feelings are, and it just seems to me there's so much emphasis. And one final thing, and I agree with some comments I've received, um, I think the chief of police has a lot of things to do in this city, <laughs> rightfully so. Um, I would be much more inclined to see this perhaps he handled, at least in a routine fashion, with something like a PIO, perhaps an enhanced PIO, or we're looking for a new type of uh, director for the PIO and expanding its capabilities, and perhaps have the police as a reference. For example, PIO makes a preliminary authorization and it's maybe run by a police staffer to see is there a threat or a fire department to get their approval. We do it on buildings routinely. If people want to build a certain type of building, get approvals, it runs through the departments and the police or fire check off, no, we need this, that. And something like that where it's blatant, let's say they do need extra power supply or they need a generator. Maybe I'm just rambling a little bit, but those are the things I'm feeling here and I want to have just a minimum understandable nuts and bolts policy that pertains to the issues we all agree on, which is um, large productions interfering with the use of public property and potentially if there's causing problems. That's, those are my comments and maybe I wasn't effective putting them out there. I have itemized lists, but that's where I'm coming from. Thanks. Thank you, Councilmember Rinke. Thank you. I'm having a little issue with the language, actually. I, can I understand what we're trying to do here, and I think it makes sense, but I think some of the language might be con confusing, at least it is to me, because under um, the exemptions from the permit fee requirements, we have a <laughs> statement which says, any filming activity conducted for any personal and non-commercial use. I get that. That's your weddings, your kids' games, all that kind of stuff and which does not involve the use of filming equipment. And then I go over and read what filming equipment is, and it tells me it's film, digital, or video cameras. That's the thing that I would use to videotape my kids. And then the next one talks about, number two talks about handheld equipment, which is I think what we're talking about you're going to use, but the definition is the same as filming equipment. So to me, that's it's a little, it's conflicting in my mind, because it seems to me that you're saying you can use it and you can't use it, and it's just not real clear to me. To, I guess it's a language issue for me, because I, I get the point. And then